bit about why we're here and what we're doing. Um, over the last 12 to 18 months, Campaigning for Cancer has taken on creating education information that isn't freely available. So in, there is a disparity in cancers when it comes to having access to information. And what we looked around was creating education or um, uh, ad awareness material that we could that were for patients that didn't have cancers that were addressed necessarily. Uh, we also wanted to make sure that what we did was scalable and replicable. I'm a reproductive specialist, so how do you get to a reproductive specialist? You become a general doctor and then you go and do your become a gynecologist, so I um, did for 12 years just general obstetrics and, and gynecology, and then went to uh, specialised reproductive medicine, which is another four years of, of studying as well. So, and I've always been, keep saying this as well, there's always two dreaded C's in, in medicine. This, the one is cancer, and the other C is childlessness. So, I'm uh, fortunate to be part of, in all of those uh, disciplines. Um, so, like I said, I'm not an oncologist, so I'm going to briefly just discuss in our sort of view and where we are working at, how does survival cancer impact someone's fertility and how we all can, can play a role in this. To, to just to know that worldwide, the most common cancer in women worldwide is uh, survival cancer. In the States, this is uh, um, all where the data is coming from, 40, there has been a 45% decrease in the incidence. What is important that 30% of women that's been diagnosed with cervical cancer is younger than the age of 40, meaning these women are still in their reproductive years. Some of them had children or some is, uh, have not completed their family. So this is very important to know. If you treat cervical cancer, you can be very aggressive and to say, well, let's get rid of everything and maybe just push the boundaries a bit further. Um, or you can just ask your patient, what are your, what still are your needs? And do you want to have your family? You want to be on people. Yeah. Just let's show us some slides about the cervix, and the cervix is a very unique organ. It is a part of the uterus, this lower end of this. The sketch does not show it as much, but it does have a lot of cervical glands that produce mucus. This mucus is very important because if you look at fertility, this mucus um, acts as a filter that allows good sperm to enter and the, the not so good ones to, to stay behind and also serves as a reservoir where sperm will be surviving at least for up to five days if the sperm can be in that reservoir and then frequently the guys get through and then they go up and ovulate or fertilize the, the ovulated egg. Um, so this is important just to know if you are going to involve some treatment of this area it can potentially affect that woman's mucus production and it can also affect the a natural chance of, 